Here's an important little function, the identity function. Let id x equal x. It's called identity because it's the function that just returns whatever you pass it. So if I pass 5 to id, I get 5. If I pass hello to id, I get hello. Notice what the type of id is. It's a type that doesn't look the same as any of the other types we've looked at so far. It has this funny syntax in it, single quote a. This is actually the syntax for what's called a type variable in OCaml. So we have variables that are the normal kinds of variables we've been using all along. You might think of those as value variables. Type variables stand for an unknown type in the same way as a regular variable or a value variable stands for an unknown value. You've seen this kind of feature before in Java. The angle bracket t in list t in Java is a way of parameterizing on a type. That name t stands for an unknown type in the list class. In OCaml syntax, we write type variables as any other kind of identifier, but with a single quote in front of it. So sometimes people will say single quote. I will often, for brevity, say tick. So like tick a. You might have a longer variable name, of course, than just a. You might have tick foo, tick key, tick value, especially if you were working with the dictionary, for example. But most often, the simplest type variable we ever write is just going to be tick a. And for that form of type variable, OCaml programmers usually use Greek pronunciation. So instead of tick A, we'll say alpha. Instead of tick B, we'll say beta. Instead of tick C, we'll say gamma. And then rarely do we really go on to more than three type variables inside of a given expression. This is a kind of polymorphism. Poly, of course, here means many, and morph means form. It's a way of writing a function that works for many arguments, regardless of their type. We saw that with the id function. It worked whether you passed an integer to it, or a string, or a boolean if you wanted, say as well, id true. This is a kind of polymorphism that is closely related to what you've seen in Java with generics. It's also somewhat related to C++ template instantiation. It's known as parametric polymorphism. It's a way of having a piece of code that can behave in many ways, depending on the kind of parameters that are in use.